there was a piper. And he made his living playing for the great and the good, the lords and the ladies throughout the land, playing for their dances, playing for their feasts. And it was a good living too. It served him well for many years until the king who'd ruled that land for a long time was booted off the throne and a new cruel king took his place. And this new cruel king found amongst those lords and those ladies many enemies. They supported his predecessor and he wanted rid of them. He ordered that they be executed one by one. And so our piper, he lost the only money he had to entertain those people. But such are the ways of this new cruel king that he ordered as those went to the execution place, to the gallows, they should hear in their final moments a dreadful, dreary, dismal dirge. And so our piper, he got one final chance to play for those people and he played. executions went on and on for months. This was no way to make a living and worse still another piper had arrived in the town and what little work there was had to be shared between the two of them. And so our piper, he decided he needed to make a new way in his life. He decided to leave that place and go to find work in another city. And it was not the right type of year to walk. It was the middle of the winter. The snow was deep. The ground was so hard he had to trudge through that snow. But he was determined and he made his way along those lanes. And as he walked and he walked and he trudged through the snow, he saw something before him, something that would have terrified you and it would have terrified me, but not our piper. He'd seen so many dreadful things of late. In front of him on the path lay a body face down in the snow. Well, our piper, being a practical man, he thought, I wonder if this corpse here has anything that could be of use to me. And so he went and rolled it over. And then he allowed himself a small smile because it was the rival piper. But if that could happen to him, it could happen to our piper. And so he looked, what could be of any use? Well, he has a hat, but it's not as fine as my hat. He has some pipes, but it never did sound as sweet as mine. But those boots, those boots, they've got months of walking left in them. He was determined to have the boots. And so he grabbed hold of those boots and he pulled and he tugged and he tugged and he pulled. But it was no good. They were frozen on. It was so cold. And he pulled and tugged and tugged and pulled some more. There was nothing else for it. Because he was a determined man, he took out his knife and he began to hack and cut through that leg until he'd taken off a foot with the boots still frozen on and then the other and once he had those two boots he tied the laces together slung them over his shoulder and continued on his way and he walked and he walked he walked some more he's walking up a hill but then he realized his luck was changing at the top of the hill there was a cottage and a few more steps it showed it was more than a cottage it was a farmhouse a very spacious place. And in a few more steps, you could see the lights warm and welcoming from the window. You could see the smoke rising from the chimney. And he thought he'd take shelter there. He went to knock at the door. But just before he did, he took the boots from his shoulder and tucked them inside his cloak and then knocked on the door. The farmer's wife came to the door. She looked him up and down. And what do you want, you raggedy old piper? Uh, a mistress, um, just as take shelter within your house this evening, otherwise I'll end up on the road, otherwise I'll end up freezing to death on the road. You can't come in my clean house, not the state of you, but if you must, you can sleep in his shippen, the buyer, over there. 
the Piper looked across the farmyard to the cow shed. It would have to do. He made his way across the yard and the farmer's wife called after him. Just be careful, don't get too close to Blossom. She'll nibble anything she gets a chance. The Piper, he went into the farm shed. He looked at the cow. He said, Blossom. Good evening, said the Piper. And taking the farmer's wife's advice, he made his bed far away from the cow. He made his bed in as much straw as he could build up into a pile, leant against it, and there he passed a very cold, uncomfortable night, maybe getting an hour of sleep before the cockle crowed outside. He knew it was morning, and the farmer's wife would be in to milk blots on the cow. But then at that moment, he had a thought. He could play a trick on them. Instead of letting them into the house last night, we'd be warm, we'd be forced to sleep in the byre. Well, this was something he wouldn't forget in a hurry. He took the boots, feet still frozen inside them. He placed them down in front of Blossom. He said Blossom, and the piper hid himself under the straw. Sure enough, in a few moments, the farmer's wife came in. She opened the door. She looked at the cow. She looked down at the boots and cried out, Ah! The cow was eating the piper and fled. The farmer himself, being woken by this commotion, thought, what is my wife talking about now? He went in, he saw the cow and the boots, and he cried out, what will become of a man that lets his beast eat another man? And he fled. And all the while, our piper, laughing to himself under the straw, and seeing that the farmer and his wife had left, fled across the fields. He took his chance. He went into that warm house, he took the boots and he placed them down in front of the fire to thaw out those feet. And there, as he was warming himself and thinking about how he could continue on his way, he heard a sound, a sound which seemed familiar, a sound which brought back memories of the sound that people hear before they die. It was coming closer. The piper went to the window, he looked out, a strange shape coming up the path. Not quite walking, more lolloping, until it was at the door. The door burst open, and the last thing the piper heard was, My boots!